Hello friends, welcome back to another video. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe and give this video a like. I post videos about books, writing, grammar, and more every Tuesday with the possibility of bonus videos on Fridays. <laughs> I'm here today to talk to you guys about burnout and more importantly, how to avoid it. This is something I am extremely familiar with. From kindergarten through university, I was one of those students who had straight A's, was in the honor society, did volunteer work, played a sport, was in the band, worked multiple jobs, and somehow kept up with the social life. On the outside, it looked like everything was perfectly fine and that I was succeeding. But I can't tell you how many times I burned myself out and would have breakdowns and panic attacks, all while keeping on the mask of being able to do it all. It wasn't until the last few years that I really started taking care of my mental health. I've been able to run my business, write my book, start new projects like YouTube, and be present in my marriage, all while avoiding the constant pressure and high anxiety I used to feel at every moment of the day. I would love to help you relieve some pressure while keeping up productivity so you can live a fulfilling life and maintain your mental health. Quick disclaimer, I am not a mental health professional. I'm someone who's gone through this and these are the things that helped me live a better life. So what exactly is burnout? Burnout is defined as a state of emotional, physical, and mental exhaustion caused by excessive and prolonged stress. It occurs when you feel overwhelmed, emotionally drained, and unable to meet constant demands. Signs of burnout include exhaustion, isolation, escape fantasies, irritability, and frequent illness. Growing up, I was sick at least once a month, like couldn't get out of bed physically ill. I had every single one of these symptoms for years. So here are 13 tips to help you avoid burnout. Number one, get on your schedule. Now I know this isn't a possibility for everyone, but this truly is one of the biggest things that helped me in avoiding burnout, relieving stress in my life. My schedule used to have me getting up at 5.30 every morning. Now I am not a morning person at all. I feel groggy, cranky, my stomach hurts, and it takes me far too long to feel like I'm actually awake. And I kept the schedule not only to accomplish the things I needed to in the day, but because I felt this overwhelming sense of guilt from sleeping in. There seems to be this constant pressure in the world where if you're not up by five, your day is no longer productive. And that's just really not true. Now that I have complete control over my schedule, I do not get up before 11 a.m. unless I absolutely have to. And this doesn't mean I'm getting any less work done. In fact, I'm getting more done. I still work my full day, but I'm getting up naturally. And let me tell you, not being woken up by an alarm clock is an absolute game changer. When I wake up now, I actually feel energized and like I got sleep. I'm not forcing myself to go to sleep at eight or nine so that I can get enough sleep. I naturally fall asleep around three to four in the morning. Listening to my body and not forcing myself to work a traditional schedule has been immensely helpful for my mental health. My best advice for you would be to figure out your body's natural sleeping rhythm and when you are most productive throughout the day. And if you can, get on that schedule. Which leads me to number two, get eight to 10 hours of sleep a night. I'm sure by now we all know the benefits of a good night's sleep. Boosted immune system, lower risk for serious health conditions, reduce stress, clearer thinking, better mood, etc. But how many people actually implement that into their lives? Personally, I am someone who needs nine hours of sleep. I can't even begin to tell you what a big difference this makes in helping me wake up feel rested. Now, I know my body, and if I get nine hours of sleep and I'm getting up at 5.30, I will still feel exhausted, which is why numbers one and two work together so well for me. I used to get five hours of sleep at night if I was lucky. I was exhausted all the time, unfocused, unmotivated, grouchy. It was just no good. Now I have energy, I feel rested, and I don't have that constant anxiety of waking up every few minutes to check my alarm clock 
to make sure that I didn't miss it. Are you guys familiar with that one? It's such a freeing feeling. Number three, exercise. It's easy to get caught up in all of the things that we need to do in the day, and we can look back on what we did and find that all we really did besides our work was sit at the computer all day. This can really add to that antsy, nervous energy that we get when we're stressed. Exercise is a great way to relieve these nerves. Pick something that you enjoy doing. What I personally did was I got a treadmill and put it in a spare room. I will take a break every so often, walk over, do a 10 minute walk, come back. I feel so much more focused and motivated when I get back to my work. Number four, get yourself tested. A lot of times we can have something going on with our hormones or our nutritional levels that we're not even aware of. If this happens, everything inside of you can just feel off no matter what you do, which totally adds to the stress and anxiety of your normal day. Making sure your hormones and your vitamin levels are balanced is really important. Unbalanced hormones can cause weight gain, hot flashes, headaches, stress, and lowered energy. Lacking in nutrients can cause brain fog, moodiness, and irritability, exhaustion, brittle nails, thinning hair, poor vision, and so on. It's easy to see why having an imbalance in this area can add stress to your life. If you're having any of these symptoms, go get yourself checked out and hopefully you can eliminate some of the unnecessary stress that this adds to your life. There have been a scattering of times in my life where I've been low on certain nutrients. In high school, I was anemic. So when I started taking iron, it made a huge difference. I actually was able to stay awake more during the day. I've also before been low on B12. Let me tell you how much taking B12 can help with brain fog. Because I got myself tested and I knew what was happening, I now can help prevent this. So what I do is I take a daily vitamin and then supplement anything else that I might just be lacking. Number five, accept that perfection does not exist. I know that I used to be guilty of being a huge perfectionist. I could not stand things being not just perfectly so, or things not happening the way that I thought that they should be happening. Letting go of that big part of my personality was not an easy thing, but I can honestly see the benefits that it's having on my life. I get so much more work done because I'm not spending a ridiculous amount of time on one project, and the pressures of perfection are not constantly looming over me. A quote that changed my life was, good is good enough. And it's so true. Now I get things done well, and then I move on. There's no such thing as perfect, so there's really no point in even trying. As long as you're giving your best and you're producing good work, you're doing it right. My anxiety levels have dropped significantly since adopting this into my life. Number six. Rely on others. This goes a little bit with my last point, but sometimes we tell ourselves that if we want something done right, we have to do it ourselves. While this is true for many things, like running certain parts of my business, writing my book, being in a marriage, you know, I can't really hand those things off to anybody else. But it's not so important in other areas of our life. For example, how many times have you or someone you know gone after their significant other when they have loaded the dishwasher and reloaded the dishwasher because they didn't do it right or they just didn't do it how you would do it. But if your significant other is willing to do the dishes so you don't have to, therefore creating more time and energy to focus on different projects, what does it really matter how they load the dishwasher? The dishes are still getting clean. If there's something that's not supposed to go in the dishwasher, let them know. It takes five seconds and then it's done. This is an added stress we put on ourselves that we really, really don't need to. Let that go and trust others to do things for you. You don't need a million little things on your plate because you think you're the best at doing all of them. When all is said and done, a clean dish is still a clean dish. Number seven, decide what's priority and what's just your own sense of pressure. Really evaluate the list of things that you're doing every day. 
I'm sure there's at least one thing that you could make easier or eliminate altogether. One area that I did this was with my laundry. Now I do laundry every few days and I'm sure we can all agree, laundry can take up a lot of our time, especially the folding process. So what I did was I went through all of my clothes and really asked myself, what needs to be folded? What needs to be hung? and what really doesn't matter. Now, I don't know if you know this, but socks do not need to be meticulously paired off, folded, and then precisely placed into a drawer. I don't even bother with my socks anymore. I shove them all in a drawer, saving myself time while doing laundry and relieving a small bit of the overwhelming stress that comes with all the loads of laundry. All I do are create piles of different people's socks and then that's it. And we really only have two pairs of socks, white and black. So when you're looking in the drawer, it's not hard to find the matching set. It's funny how long I stressed over being perfect when doing laundry, but we really don't need to. Most socks don't even wrinkle. I mean, I know mine don't. So if it's shoved in a drawer or folded, when you pull it out, it's the exact same sock. And if you really think about it, who's gonna be coming through my home judging how my socks are placed in a drawer? As long as it works for me and my husband, that's all that matters. So I know you can do something like this with at least one of your chores and possibly even start eliminating things you really don't need to be doing. Find what you can eliminate and don't give it a second thought. Number eight, find an activity that calms you and fills you with joy. Not enough people set aside time for themselves, especially when they've got an overwhelming amount of stuff going on in their lives. But we can't keep running on empty. You would never get in your car, start it up, see that you need to fill your tank, and then hop on the highway for a cross country road trip. You're never gonna make it. Our bodies are the same way. We can't give calmness and joy to others if we're not finding a way to fill ourselves with it. So find what makes you happy. This could be swimming, yoga, bike riding, walking, reading a book, watching TV, taking a nap, and so on. Make sure to give yourself some time for calm, relaxation, and fun because you definitely deserve it. Number nine, I love the quote, if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. I have really taken this to heart and shifted my entire life around this point. Because I'm doing what I'm passionate about, I'm excited to work every day. I find myself coming into my office when I really don't even need to. Maybe I've worked a whole day and I just wanna get some more done, or it's the weekend and I have some free time. But now, instead of feeling resentful of what I'm doing at the end of every day, I feel happy and excited and accomplished. While not all parts of my job are fun, I mean, there's still going to be stress running your own business. Most of that is overshadowed by the fact that I'm doing what truly makes me happy. If you think this isn't possible for you, really consider why you think that and evaluate if there's even a small step that you can take in the direction of what you love to do and making that an income. Number 10, learn to say no. As an ex-perfectionist and people pleaser, I know how hard this can be. We want to show others we have it all together and we have some left over and we can help you. And a lot of times we genuinely do want to help as many people as possible. But at a certain point, we can only give so much. When you stretch yourself too thin, you're really not giving anything to anybody because you're hurting yourself. People deserve our best selves when you step into a new role or a project. Saying no to others has really been a struggle for me, so I totally get it. But when you're putting the needs of others ahead of your family or yourself, it's just too much. There is a balance here. So I implore you to figure out what your limit is and start setting boundaries. Number 11, don't go to bed in a working mindset. Give yourself time to decompress from the day. This is going to help you so much in keeping your mind from racing while you're trying to get to sleep. I can always tell when I haven't given myself enough time between work and bed. I will go to bed with a million thoughts bouncing around my head and I will physically have to get up, grab my phone, write a note, try to go back to bed, something else comes up, 
and the cycle just continues. Once the workday is over, it needs to be over. Taking an hour or two to shower, eat, watch TV, read a book is absolutely insanely important. This is going to help you get more quality sleep. Number 12, talk to someone. Sometimes we have so much going on, we truly don't know how to deal with it all. Talking to someone can be extremely beneficial, and it doesn't always even have to be a professional, though that would be helpful too. But sometimes it can be a significant other, a sibling, or a friend. Make sure to ask them first if they're able to listen, because we never truly know what's going on in someone else's life. So if they say yes, let them know what's going on. And tell them beforehand what kind of resource you need them to be. Do you need them to listen? Because sometimes just saying things alleviates stress. Or do you want them to bounce ideas off of? Sometimes an outside perspective can look into what you're doing every day and ask the questions, do you really need to be doing this? They may be able to pick up on a lot of the things that you aren't and help relieve that exhausting, stressful load. Never hurts to talk it out. And number 13, make a plan and get ahead of the stress. Falling behind adds an enormity of stress to our lives. I know that when I fall behind, things start to pile up and I literally feel like I'm drowning and nothing gets done, which just adds to the stressful feeling and eventually I will hit my breaking point. I now live by a calendar and I make note of the things that must get done that day and the things that if they don't get done, it's okay. I can do them the next day or the next week. I'm also able to see where I have free time and I can actually do extra work then. Planning ahead for vacation or sickness is really helpful for me. I always try to have something in the bank just in case something comes up. For example, I always like to have one extra YouTube video made in case one week I get sick or something else happens. My video is still going to upload that week and it doesn't add the overwhelming stress that would already be on top of whatever's keeping me from making the video. If you're on YouTube, batch filming is great. You don't have to film every week. You can film every other week. And then on those opposite weeks, you can fill that time with something else. Find the areas in your life where you can get ahead and make a plan for when things go wrong. Because I promise at some point, things are gonna go wrong. That's life. Having a plan makes sure that when things do go wrong, at least certain parts of your life are going to keep going and run smoothly. So there you have it, 13 tips to help you avoid burnout. Let me know in the comments what activities bring you joy and calmness in your life. And if you found this video helpful, please make sure to give it a like and subscribe for more bookish and writing related videos. Thanks for being here and I'll see you next time. Bye.